Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. In this video, we're going to go over two different accounts of visions and visitations. They're related by President Oaks and President Nelson. Uh, the one from President Nelson I already knew about, but I didn't know about this one in this email sent to me by Stephanie Huffaker. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Subject line, hashtag Oaks testimony of visions of the dead. And in the email, hi Jared. Just wanted to share this quote from Elder Dallin H. Oaks regarding visions and visitations from his talk, Resurrection, from April 2000. Keep up the great work. You talk about all the same things I'm, I'm tracking in my mind. Thank you for gathering them in one place. Heart, a kindred spirit, Stephanie. Okay, so we'll start with this one and go directly to the source. We're on the church website. Uh, this is the May 2000 end sign but it's the April 2000 General Conference. And uh, I just want to point out right off the bat that this is being related in General Conference. Um, I can't believe how many things have uh, been shared in General Conference that I didn't know about. For example, there was Elder David B. Hate's uh, near-death experience, which was pretty detailed, and he uh, related most of it, it seems. And I can't believe that all of that was included in a general conference talk. I think that was back in 1986, but it's on my spreadsheet if you want to look it up. But uh, there's this one by, at the time, Elder Dallin H. Oaks of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, uh, who is now the first counselor in the first presidency, and um, he, he could potentially become the next prophet if President Nelson passes away. Okay, so this is under... Section 2 of his talk, The Resurrection of Mortals. And uh, I want to read this whole section just so we have, you know, the whole context. The possibility that a mortal who has died will be brought forth and live again in a resurrected body has awakened hope and stirred controversy through much of recorded history. Re relying on clear scriptural teachings, Latter-day Saints join in affirming that Christ has broken the bands of death in that death is swallowed up in victory. Because we believe the Bible and Book of Mormon descriptions of the literal resurrection of Jesus Christ, we also readily accept the numerous scriptural teachings that a similar resu resurrection will come to all mortals who have ever lived upon this earth. As Jesus taught, because I live, ye shall live also. The literal and universal nature of the resurrection is vividly described in the Book of Mormon, the prophet Amulek taught, The death of Christ shall loose the bands of this temporal death, that all shall be raised from this temporal death. The spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form. Both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame, even as we now are at this time. Now, this restoration shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous, and even there shall not be, sorry, and even there shall not so much as a hair of their heads be lost, but everything shall be restored to its perfect frame. From Alma 11, 42 through 44. Alma also taught that in the resurrection, all things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame. Okay, now here it is, this highlighted part. Many living, okay, it's the year 2000, Many living witnesses can testify to the literal fulfillment of these scriptural assur assurances of the resurrection. Many, including in my own extended family, have seen a departed loved one in vision or personal appearance and have witnessed their restoration in, quote-unquote, proper and perfect frame in the prime of life. I just have that highlighted because I'd like to know what the prime of life is. I picture something like somebody in their like maybe mid 20s, maybe early 20s, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think in the comments below what prime of life is. But um, anyway, he says vision or personal appearance. Okay. Whether these were manifestations of persons already resurrected or of righteous spirits awaiting an assured resurrection, the reality and nature of the resurrection of mortals is evident. Um, what a comfort to know 
that all who have been disadvantaged in life from birth defects, from mortal injuries, from disease, or from the natural deterioration of old age will be resurrected in proper and perfect frame. So <clears throat> I just think that that's stunning. It's just a quick little thing that he says, but he talks about the fact that uh, there are those living that have witnessed this, and uh, he has people in his own extended family that have seen it in vision or personal appearance. So that is really neat. Okay, so I added it to my spreadsheet. Um, I've renamed the spreadsheet. I had it classified as like a timeline spreadsheet, which it is, but because the bulk of it is like these quotes um, of these of these different accounts, I'm going to put it under quotes. So quotes, visions, and visitations. That's what it's called now, if you want to find it again. Okay, so um, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that at the bottom I have a running tally uh, by decade of these different accounts. Now, usually when the actual appearance happens, um, we know, we know we have that information, so I'm able to put it on this timeline according to when it actually happened. But with what we just read, there's not a specific date, and he's alluding to uh, possibly multiple f family members. So in a case like this, I just uh, count it under the decade uh, and the year that he actually relates it. So in this case, the year 2000. And so uh, that's the first one that I have for the 2000s. Um, I'm willing to bet that those those visitations and visions probably happened before the year 2000, but that's the best that I can do for right now. Um, okay, so that's that. And uh, after I went through this email and this account, um, that made me think about President Nelson because he had recent, well, relatively recently, related an account from his family of a vision and visitation. And uh, a lot of you probably are already, already aware of this. Let's see, where do I have it here? Okay, it's right here. So this is from, uh, interestingly, of all days, the 6th of April, 1891. And um, so I wanted to, like, as I was looking at this, uh, you can kind of find it, you can find it in a few different places. Uh, he shared this during Roots Tech 2017, and uh, there's this video. This is on Call to Share. Um, and you can go to about this part right here, about uh, the 20 minute mark or so, and uh, just watch it. He's sitting with his family reading this account. Um, however, there is the transcript. If you go to the church website, um, it has everything that he said. Um, in this transcript, okay? Uh, it's also a couple other places. So this is in the October 2017 Ensign. And then they also published it in the Friend magazine. And there's a few other places. But what I noticed is that when I was looking at all these, not all of them seemed to be the full account. And so I found the full account. Uh, you have to go to uh, President Nelson's book, uh, this is his autobiography, From Heart to Heart, uh, published in, it was 79, if I remember right, which is interesting because I think probably some of the more interesting things and important things that happened in his life happened after 1979. He wasn't even an apostle at this point, and he wrote this autobiography. Like I've said before, he, he thought it was like over. He did, I don't know how much he realized what was going to happen in the decades to come. But uh, here, here he is, president of the church, about to turn 100 years old um, if he makes it to his next birthday on September 9th. But, okay, so he puts this in his autobiography, and uh, this seems to be the full account. Okay? Okay. Um, but, sorry, I just remembered. We need to kind of read this, like, little intro that he does um, during the Roots Tech conference. He says, I wanted to tell the family about my grandfather Nelson and the precious gift he gave to us. His name is Andrew Clarence Nelson. They called him AC. He died when my father was 17 years old, uh, which that's an interesting number. 
Uh, he, anyway, uh, so I never knew my grandfather, Nelson. He's the only one of my four grandparents I did not know. When my grandfather, A.C. Nelson, was a young husband and father, just 27 years old, his father died. Then, about three months later, his father, now deceased, came to visit him. The date of this visit was the night of April 6, 1891. Uh, Grandfather Nelson was so impressed by his father's visit that he wrote the experience in his own journal for his family and his friends. Uh, And thanks to your encouragement, (coughs) I I I took his journal entry and created this document and made copies of this document for every member of the family. Listen to my grandfather's words about that sacred experience. Okay, and then from here... We'll go to what I think is the most complete account. Okay, Father's Visit. On the night of April 6th, 1891, here, let me get rid of this. It's bugging me. I had a strange dream or vision in which I saw and conversed with my father who died uh, January 27th, 1891. I felt so impressed after it that I desired to write it for my own benefit and for the benefit of my family and friends. Though some may scorn and laugh at the idea of such a visitation, yet I feel assured that it was real, and it has been, and I hope will always will be, a source of much pleasure and satisfaction to me. To corroborate my testimony of the possibility of such a visitation, I quote the following, quote, Spirits can appear to men when permitted, but not having a fleshy tabernacle cannot hide their glory. End quote. That's from Key to Theology, page 120. I want to say that that was written by Parley P. Pratt. Uh, Maybe if somebody could look that up and put it in the comments, that'd be great. Uh, But I think we've already read from that book before. Key to Theology. But uh, let me just stop right here. That's really interesting. Spirits can appear to men when permitted, but not having a fleshy tabernacle, so not being resurrected yet, cannot hide their glory. So that means that if you are resurrected, you can hide your glory. And we've actually covered that on the channel before. Brigham Young talked about the fact that Christ um, and even God the Father, they can appear on earth and appear as a stranger, and you, and you wouldn't know the difference from them and just some stranger on the street. He said that it happens, and I think I have a few other accounts or a few other quotes talking about that. But when you're a spirit, you cannot hide your glory, according to this. So that's interesting. Okay. I was in bed when Father came in or entered the room. He came and sat on the side of the bed, I could plainly see my wife and children in bed, too. My father came to the bed. He first said, Well, my son, being uh, you were not there at Redmond when I died, so that I did not get to see you, and as I have a few spare minutes, I received permission to come and see you a few minutes. I'm very glad to see you, father. How do you do? I'm feeling well, my son, and have had very much to do since I died. What have you been doing since you died, Father? Have you seen, here I mentioned the names of some of our dead friends. Uh, This question he did not answer, but looked at me and smiled. My son, I've been traveling together with Apostle Erastus Snow ever since I died. That is, since three days after I died. It's a very specific detail. He died. Three days later, he started traveling with uh, Apostle Arrasta Snow. Um, So since three days after I died, then I received my commission to preach the gospel. You cannot imagine, my son, how many spirits there are in the spirit world that have not yet received the gospel. But many are receiving it, and a great work is being accomplished. Many are anxiously looking forward, or sorry, looking forth to their friends who are still living to administer for them in the temples. I've been very busy in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Before we continue, I just want to point out, um, just like it is here, you don't just like do things on the other side without the proper authority. So it's so interesting. He died. 
you know, three days go by. Not sure why. I don't know what was going on. But that's when he received his commission. And then ever since that time, he's been doing uh, like missionary work. And it seems like he was assigned to to work with um, uh, Apostle Erastus Snow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Will all the spirits believe you, Father, when you teach them the gospel? No, they will not. How are you and Mother, the boys, Emily, and the girls getting along? I am well, Father, and when I last heard from Redmond, the folks there were well. Father, can you see us at all times, and do you know what we are doing? No, my son, I cannot. I have something else to do. I cannot go when and where I please. Uh, there is as much and much more order here in the spirit world than in the other world. Let me just pause right there, because that is very similar to what we read. And I still haven't transcribed it. Let me just find it really quick. Um, I went over this account by, this was uh, Hebrew Quincy Hale. Uh, he had uh, basically a near-death experience is what it, what it seemed like. Uh, it, it, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It's kind of unclear, but I think it was a near-death experience. And um, he talked about that fact that there was, it was much more orderly in the spirit world. Uh, but this account comes from January 20th, 20th, 1920. So that was some time after the one that we're reading here back in <clears throat> 1891. Okay. And, and since this was like in a private journal, I, I don't, I doubt that he would have had access to this account. So it's just an interesting similarity between the two accounts. Okay. I have been assigned work and that must be for, be performed. Uh, we, we intend to go to the temple and get sealed to you as soon as my school is closed. I've talked with the girls about it and they want to be sealed to you. That, my son, is partly why I came to see what I came to see you about. Uh, we will yet make a family and live throughout eternity. How do you feel at all times, Father? Oh, I feel splendid and enjoy my labors. Still, I must admit that at times I get a little lonesome to see my family, but it is only a short time till we till we will again see each other. Oh, Father, how glad I am that you died in full faith in the gospel and in full fellowship in the church. Well, my son, your father always did know since he joined the church that the gospel was true. And you know that I always taught it to you when you were a small boy. I got a little stubborn, but uh, who is there of us that has not been a little cross and naughty at times? The short time that I was cross does not amount to 15 minutes in comparison to eternity. I was punished for it. So I just want to point out that little detail. He says that he was punished. I assume, I mean, he's talking about being cross or being uh, angry, right? Um, but maybe it's for more. I mean, there is um, that part in the scriptures that talks about that we'll have a bright recollection of all our guilt. And I think that that's going to be a very painful thing for everybody. Um, we do know that we're forgiven. Um, so it's not clear exactly how it goes. <clears throat> what we have studied is that if you are if you lived a telestial law in this life, then during the millennium, you're going to be uh, paying for your sins. Even though Christ paid for everybody's sins, you, having lived a telestial law, are going to be in the spirit world during the millennium paying for your sins. But if this is true right here, um, it sounds like the rest of us will maybe have some kind of punishment as well, if, if nothing more than having to look back and remember what we did. I don't know. Um, put your thoughts in the comments below, but I just thought that was a peculiar thing. I was punished for it. Okay, <clears throat> but it is all right. My son, you take care that you do not get that way. Father, is it natural to die or does it seem natural? Uh, was there not a time when your spirit was in such a pain that it could not realize what was going on or taking place? 
No, my son, there was not such a time. It is just as natural to die as it is to be born, or for you to pass out of that door. Here he pointed at the door. When I had told the folks that I could not last long, it turned dark and I could see, I could not see anything for a few minutes. Then the first thing I could see was a number of spirits in the spirit world. Then I told the folks that I must go. The paper you gave me, my son, is dated wrong, but it makes no particular difference. Correct records are kept here. Uh, that's another thing I think we saw in that in that um, near-death experience account that I was just talking about. I want to point out here, um, <laughs> lately I've been on this kick of like uh, learning about end of life. Uh, ever since we went to Pahusky, Oklahoma, uh, we went to the Pioneer the Pioneer Woman Mercantile Store because that's where she's from, and she has a store there and a restaurant and, and cafe. We went there. I met up with one of my viewers and subscribers, Amanda uh, Vaclaw. Right? Is it Vaclaw? Sorry if I got that wrong. And uh, she's a hospice nurse, and she was telling me about these different uh, phenomena that take place at the end of life. And there's a number of different things that I didn't know about. And um, one of those things is uh, what's called visioning. It's, it's, I suppose, similar to a near-death experience, sort of, but it's more like, no, you're definitely going. Uh, and what you start to experience is you start to see, um, you know, like members of your family that have gone on before you. And this is something that I saw myself uh, in what my grandpa told me before he passed away. We were sitting and uh, just talking, and then he talked about the fact that, you know, he felt like his time was coming to an end, and he, he was starting to see family members. Um, and it, it was just, I couldn't, it was crazy to hear that, because I feel like these accounts, they come from people that I don't know, but then here was my own grandpa telling this to me. And uh, I think that's what he's describing here, because he's talking about him dying. You know, it was dark, and he couldn't see for a few minutes while he was still alive. And then the first thing that he could see was a number of spirits. So I think he's describing this like phenomena of visioning where you start to receive spirit, um, visits from your, your loved ones. And then like, you know, you have, you have time to still like, like he did here, like say parting words to your loved ones before you pass on. So, okay. So it turned dark and I could not see anything for a few minutes. Then the first thing I could see was a number of spirits in the spirit world. Then I told the folks that I must go. And then he talks about the records. Okay. Father, is the principle in, sorry, is the principle in doctrine of the resurrection um, as taught us true? True. Yes, my son, as true as can be. You cannot avoid being resurrected. It is just as natural for all to be resurrected as it is to be born and die again. No one can avoid being resurrected. There are many spirits in the spirit world who would to God. Now listen to this. There are many spirits in the spirit world who would to God that there would be, that there would be, that there would be no resurrection. Uh, that's kind of weird. Let me know your thoughts on that. Why, <coughs> excuse me, why would anybody not want to be resurrected? My understanding is that receiving a physical body is desirable. Um, that's something that even uh, Satan and his followers want. They, you know, uh, they do what they can in their condition to try and experience mortality. Um, but I, I wonder why someone would not want to be resurrected. Hmm. That's weird. Maybe it has to do with the final judgment because the final judgment is tied in with your resurrection. Uh, we've gone over the fact that I have it on my spreadsheet called quotes A through Z. Uh, just go to resurrection, uh, different types of bodies. I think that's what it's under. And um, your body, your resurrected body goes according to whatever kingdom of glory you inherit. And these bodies from kingdom to kingdom are very different. Well, they're, yeah, they're substantially different. 
done videos about this. So maybe it has to do with that, like reluctance or dreading uh, final judgment. I don't know. Okay, so continuing. Father, is the gospel is taught by this church true? My son, do you see that picture? Pointing to a picture of the first presidency of the church hanging on the wall. Yes, I see it. Well, just as sure as you see that picture, just so sure is the gospel true. The gospel of Jesus Christ has within it the power of saving every man and woman that will obey it, and in no other way can there uh, can they ever obtain a salvation in the kingdom of God. My son, always cling to the gospel. Be humble, be prayerful, be submissive to priesthood, be true, be faithful to the covenants you have made with God. Never do anything that will displease God. Oh, what a blessing is the gospel. My son, be a good boy. Goodbye. I then saw him leave the room. He was neatly dressed in a suit of light gray clothes, which I had never seen him wear when alive. And then that's it. That's the account. Uh, there was a lot of detail in that. A lot of, uh, you know, questions answered. It was, it was almost like a question answer session. And uh, there's some interesting things in here. I'm going to have to go and search for that quote up here from uh, Key to Theology at the very beginning about uh, spirits and resurrected bodies and glory and not being able to hide your glory as a spirit. I'll bet there's more in that paragraph. Uh, I find that to be the case quite a bit when I go and find those sources. But, um, okay, and then I want to hop back over to uh, this transcript because later on, President Nelson says, My grandfather's visit with his departed father happened 27 years before President Joseph F. Smith's vision of the redemption of the dead. Uh, dated 1918. That vision has become section 138 of the Doctrine and Covenants. From President Smith's experience, he taught that the faithful elders continue during doing missionary work after they depart from this mortal world. And I'm sure that's not just the elders. It would be the sisters too. So many of our sisters are, ex uh, so many of our sisters are exceptional missionaries. Yeah, and that's that's definitely true. I've seen that on my mission and, um, you know, after my mission. I don't think I really knew any sister missionaries before my mission, but. Okay, so I have that all here. Um, again, this spreadsheet is called Quotes, Visions, Visitations. Uh, it's best to view <laughs> my, my spreadsheets on a, a, like a laptop or a PC because then you can go to this cell right here under column K account, double click on this, and then it'll have all the different um, accounts uh, for a given vision or visitation. So, my gosh, I just, and I, I know of some more that I need to get to. So I know that there's still more that I need to add that I've already covered before, and I'll do that in the due process of time. But I also am fairly certain that there's even more that I haven't covered. So this brings uh, the total. I didn't say this before. Let's zoom in. So I now have a total of 62 um, accounts of visions, visitations, dreams, near-death experiences. And uh, to be clear, this is when you have like a heavenly messenger or Satan and evil spirits. If you have someone from like the other side of the veil, essentially visiting, that's what, the, that's what I'm tracking. Um, I'm only doing it for more like official accounts where you have like a general authority uh, involved, or it seems to be accepted by a general authority. So I'm not doing like uh, personal ones. And, and I know that there's probably many of you that have had things like this. Um, and then if you go to the right, this is just for new people. I'm keeping a tally of uh, the visitors. So in the number one spot is just nondescript angels with 18. And then Jesus Christ with 14. 
the angel Moroni, 10, God the Father, 8, Adam, 5, Brigham Young, 5, and then so on. And uh, there are there have been many, 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 many different visitors and people being visited. Uh, in fact, I'm going to make another another portion of this for uh, those being visited. Um, there's a lot of data here. Okay, well, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it. And I'll talk to you guys later.